Welcome to the first video on genetic variation and change. This one is on meiosis and mutation. So hopefully you'll remember something about meiosis from the level one videos. But today we're going to look at those changes and how that affects variation. Now before we delve into detail, the purpose of genetic variation, you need to know this, is it creates differences in individuals that could be advantageous for the population survival. Now there are three details you're going to need to know for meiosis about how this causes genetic variation. The first is called independent assortment. You'll need to know this title. Now independent assortment means that you've taken a pair of chromosomes and they're randomly getting segregated into two separate parts. This is in meiosis phase one. The second thing you need to know is the word called segregation. This is the random separation of these two chromatids when they separate in meiosis phase two to create four separate daughter cells. And the last thing you need to know is crossing over. Hopefully you'll remember some of this from phase one, but it's when we get these two homologous chromosomes, the two that are sitting next to each other in a pair, and the chromatids that are next to each other, the two sides, actually physically cross over and swap the genes or the genetic material that they have there. So all three of these things cause genetic variation through meiosis. And that, if you remember, creates differences in individuals that could be advantageous for survival. So you need to remember all these explanations and all of these words. The second thing out of four that we're going to learn in this video is about linked genes. They'll ask you about this in your exam and you need to know what it means. It simply means there's genes that are physically close to each other on the same chromatid. They're right next to each other. And so it means they're often inherited together. They often go together because it's unlikely they'll get split up right down the middle. So some examples of that is red hair and freckles. They're very, very close to each other on the gene, so they almost always go together. Now, sometimes they are separated from each other, but more often than not, they come together. Another example is dark skin and dark hair. They go together almost all of the time. These are called linked genes. They're close to each other and they don't easily get separated. The third thing we're going to learn on this video is about mutation. Now we're going to zoom right down to the DNA level and look at how the structure of DNA can be altered and cause a mutation. So the definition that you need to know is it's the changing of the structure of a gene. The structure of a gene is just the DNA sequence. And the second part, which results in new alleles. So it means that something's actually going to change. The gene is going to express something new. Some of you, if you've done the DNA topic so far, will know that you have base pairs along your DNA sequence. And for those of you who have studied the gene expression topic, you'll know the body reads these DNA base pairs in sets of three called triplets. If you haven't done that, you now know. So it's the same kind of way that we read words and they could be made up of letters of three. So the base pairs of DNA are like letters and the body reads them like words. So for example, we could read the old man did not get his hat. We're reading letters like the base pairs and words sets of three. So this is how your body works on the DNA level. Now say for example, you have an X-ray coming in and hitting one of these base pairs. Three things can happen. So one, you could cause the body to actually add in another base pair, particularly while it was creating new DNA strands. And this could have a whole extra one sitting in here, an extra C and G or an extra TNA coming in. Or it could subtract something out. For example, it could just completely take away this TA pair. Or it could cause one to repeat, so it might go TA, 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 and just add it in before anything else happens. Now what this x-ray can actually do is analogous to if we knocked out a letter from our sentence. It causes everything to shift. And so instead of saying the old man did not get his hat, now if we take out L, we take out a base pair, it reads something completely different and in fact doesn't make any sense at all. And that is the problem with x-ray mutation. It can cause our DNA to stuff up and it means the body can no longer read it. However, just occasionally, it might create new words and possibly new sentences that the body can read. Like for example here, we've created the word and just by chance. That is a real word that we can read. So this could happen to cause a new allele that gets expressed. So what you need to know is that there are four causes that could cause these changes in DNA. 
There could be light, which again could cause some addition, some subtraction, or some repeating of these base pairs. There could be radiation, which will do the same thing, or chemicals can do the same thing. The other thing, which isn't externally imposed, is our body could just make a mistake when we're doing DNA replication and cause these things to happen. Now these go on all the time, and so occasionally you get a mutation which results in a new allele. The fourth thing we're going to learn in this video is about a gene pool. The mutation, we're looking very, very small into DNA. Now we're looking very big. So a gene pool is a complete set of different alleles within an interbreeding population. Now the words and terms you need to know are about somatic cells and gametic cells. Your somatic cells are the body cells that you have. And we'll explain why that's meaningful. Your gametic cells are the sperm if you're a male or the eggs if you're a female. They're the ones that are going to be passed on to your offspring. So when we're talking about mutations, they could happen in the somatic cells, in your body cells. If this is the case, it's not going to get inherited because your body cells don't go on to make sperm and therefore they're not going to be passed on to your offspring. They occur just in one individual only. They don't get passed on and they're not added to the general gene pool. However, when you're talking about mutations in gametic cells, your sex cells, they can be inherited because they are the genes that are going to be passed on. So it's no longer limited to just the one individual. It can be added on to the gene pool and passed on to their offspring. So that is why it's important to know the difference between body cells, where you have a mutation just in one individual, and somatic cells, where you have a mutation that can be passed on to the whole population and at least the offspring of that individual. Okay, so what you need to know, you need to remember that there are three different things in meiosis that cause genetic variation and the terms. It's independent assortment, where these chromosomes are randomly separated, random segregation of these chromosomes. The actual term segregation, where you have random separation of each chromatid to create four different daughter cells. And the crossing over that occurs. That's when the genetic material in two adjacent chromatids swap over with each other. Okay, so that genetic variation overall creates differences in individuals that could be advantageous for survival. So this is the overarching theme which you should definitely include in your answer. Next we learned about linked genes. These are on the same chromatid and they're very close to each other so they are often inherited together. Third, we learned about mutation and this is when we change the structure of a gene, we change the structure of the DNA and that results in new alleles or new expressions of that gene. And this can happen due to light, chemicals, radiation, or DNA replication errors. Remember, these three, light, radiation, and chemicals, are externally imposed. They happen due to outside factors, whereas DNA replication errors occur within your body. And it's important to know where this mutation happens, because if it happens in your somatic cell, your body cells, it only affects the individual. If it happens in your gametic cells, your sex cells, it gets passed on to the offspring, added to the gene pool, and it is inherited. So those differences are key. Now let's move on to a question. This question asks us to define the term mutation and explain why the result of mutations in somatic and gametic cells, our body and our sex cells, aren't the same in terms of creating new alleles that enter the gene pool. So first, let's define mutation. We know that mutation is the changing of the structure of a gene that results in new alleles. We've learned that. And we know that somatic mutations occur in any cells of the body, the body cells, that are not the gametes, they're not the sex cells. Whereas gametic mutations only occur in the sex cells, in the gametes, for example, in the sperm and the eggs. Now the four things we know that get affected are that, we're just going to list them one by one, somatic mutations aren't passed on. You could expand this explanation by saying these somatic, these body mutations, only affect the individual because they're not in the gametes. In contrast, gametic mutations are inheritable. They get transferred to the next and possibly the next again generation. So these gametic mutations aren't limited to just the individual where the mutation happens. They can actually or do actually get passed on. Now, just to answer the last part of the question, it says in terms of creating new alleles into the gene pool. So we want to say the new alleles created by gametic mutations are available to the gene pool because they get passed on to other members of the population. And so they may become established in that gene pool or in that population. 